Hi, welcome to this Stair Tailored. I'm Sarah Powell from the University of Texas at Austin, and we're focused on learning about word problem instruction and the total schema. So what do we mean by schema? A schema refers to the structure of a word problem. So it's like what's actually going on in the word problem. And when we think about uh, the elementary and secondary levels, we see six schemas regularly in play. Today in this ta stair tailored, we're going to focus on the total schema. Um, and other stair tailoreds will learn about the difference and change schemas. Those are the three additive schemas. And then we have three multiplicative schemas, equal groups, comparison, and, and ratios and proportions. And we'll talk about those in other stair tailored. But right now, we're gonna focus on the total schema. So what is the total schema? In the total schema, we have parts that are put together for a total. And your classic total story is this. Max baked 40 cookies and 75 brownies. How many baked goods did Max bake? So there we have a part, we have our cookies part, and we have our brownies part, and the question is asking us to figure out the total of baked goods, so the total of cookies and brownies. So that is a total problem. But these are also total problems. So look at this one right here. Max baked 115 cookies and brownies. If Max baked 40 cookies, how many brownies did he bake? Now when I think about the schema of this word problem, it is still a total problem because we're given the total and one part, and we're asked to find about the other part. So the components are still the same. We have total and parts, just like up here, where we're asked about the total and we were given the parts. And the same thing with this story here. Max baked 115 cookies and brownies. He baked 75 brownies. How many cookies did he bake? Still a total problem, because we've got a total and parts. All of these are total problems. Now we help students understand these as total problems and then once they identify a problem as being a total problem, we can use some different uh, methods to help them organize the word problem information. So you might want to use a total equation. This total equation stands for P1 part 1 plus P2 part 2 equals the T or total, and I'll show you how we could use that today. Um, some people also like to use a graphic organizer like this one. Here I could put the total amount and the different parts here to help understand um, how all of these numbers work together to solve a total problem. Now we've got our um, understanding of a total problem and we have tools to solve a total problem, but to help students really cue into, well, is this a total problem? It's good to have a nice, precise question. And so the question we ask students when we ask like, oh, do you think this is a total problem? We don't ask it like that. We say, are parts put together for a total? And you'll notice one of the things I'm doing is that I'm also using my hands to help students understand a total problem. So we always say our parts, so I've got two, my hands kind of spread apart like this, our parts put together for a total. And what we see in a lot of our research is that students really latch on to those gestures. So you'll ask them like, well, what type of problem do you think this is? And they'll actually use their hands to show what type of problem it is instead of using their language. So you should be using a combination of your gestures and your language. So our parts put together for a total. So we're going to solve a word problem here. I'm going to go over here and grab my marker and I see a word problem. So I need to apply an attack strategy. The attack strategy is just a generalized strategy that's going to help me work through this word problem. And the attack strategy that I like to use is UPS check. And so I'm going to write this right here and I'm going to write it vertically like this to help me kind of see like, oh, first I do this, then I do that, then I do this, and then finally I check my work. And this stands for understand plan, solve, and check. So I have to understand the problem by reading it. Diana works at a clothing store. She sold one-sixth of the total number of green shirts on Monday and one-twelfth of the total number of green shirts on Tuesday. What fraction of green shirts did Diana sell on Monday and Tuesday? Now another part of understanding it is focusing in on what is this problem about? So I would ask students, well, what is this problem about? Hmm, you know what, this problem is about shirts. So I'm gonna underline shirts. If you wanted to underline green shirts, you're welcome to do that. But I want you to be very picky about what you underline. Don't underline that many things. Don't underline the whole problem. 
be very, very picky. Just underline one, two, maybe three different words. So I've got an understanding of this problem and I'm gonna focus on the shirts that Diana sold. So I'm actually gonna check off that you don't need to do it again. Now let's do our plan. And this is where we focus on our schema. This is where I would ask, well, is this a problem where parts are put together for a total? And I would say, well, yeah, because I have a Monday part and a Tuesday part, and our job is to figure out the total altogether. So I'm going to use my total equation. So that's P1 plus P2 equals T. I write that right there. And I've got my plan. I'm going to solve this as a total problem. And this total equation is going to help me organize my work. Now, I've got to solve this problem. I'm going to find the numbers that I need and I'm going to plug them into my total equation to help me solve the problem. Let's see, I start reading at the beginning. She works with a clothing store. She sold one-sixth of the total green shirts on Monday. One-sixth tells me about shirts and I would ask students, well, does one-sixth tell us about the parts or the total? Well, one-sixth tells us about one of the parts, so I'm going to write it here underneath P1. And I also like to check off one-sixth so I don't use it again and I make sure that I used it. Let's see, I keep reading and she has green shirts and then she sold one twelfth of the total shirts on Tuesday. One twelfth, does that tell us about one of the parts or the total? That tells us about one of the parts and so I'm going to go ahead and write that underneath P2. And then I have to figure out what fraction of green shirts did she sell on Monday and Tuesday? So that is, we have to figure out the total. Right now it is unknown. I'm gonna mark mine with a question mark. You could mark it with a T for T-shirts or an S for shirts. You could mark it with a box, a line, lots of different ways that you can mark this. Now I'm going to put in my signs and I'm gonna figure out, well, how do I have to solve this equation? Well, here, if I add 1 sixth plus 1 12th, that would give me the total. I am going to use common denominators here to make this adding a little bit easier. 1 sixth is equivalent to 2 twelfths, and I'm adding that to 1 twelfth, and so I have 1, uh, one twelfth plus 2 twelfths is 3 twelfths. So my question mark, and I'm gonna just like write this over here, my question mark is 3 twelfths, and I always like to label for my numerical answer, and what would be a good answer? Here she sold 3 twelfths of the shirts. Notice I underlined that at the beginning and it's coming back at the end to help me out there. All right, so we've solved the problem and now we need to check our work. Lots of different ways to check the work. I could do 3 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, that equals 1 twelfth. 3 twelfths minus 1 twelfth equals 1 sixth or 2 twelfths. Many different ways to check the work. I would encourage students to check their work in, in, in multiple ways. But the important thing is that I have checked my work to ensure that 2 twelfths plus 1 twelfth is the same as 3 twelfths. So that's how we solved that total problem. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing and then I'll be right back to solve a different type of total problem. Okay, now let's solve this total problem. So I see, a mix of <laughs> I see a mix of numbers and words. That means I need to use my attack strategy. I'm going to use my attack strategy of UPS check. And I'm going to do the understanding by reading the problem. Tickets for a play were sold on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. If a total of 900 tickets were sold for the play, how many tickets were sold on Wednesday? Then I look over here and I see that I have this nice little table that tells me the tickets sold on Monday and the tickets sold on Tuesday, but I don't know the Wednesday part, so we're going to have to figure that out. And I've got to think, like, well, what am I focused in on in this story? You know, I'm focused in on this story on tickets. So I'm going to go ahead and underline the word tickets here. Just to help me focus on the numbers about tickets, and I'm going to answer a question about the tickets. So I've got an understanding of the problem. Now we need to make a plan. I would ask the students, is this a total problem where parts are put together for a total? And I'd say, well, yeah, it is a total problem, but it's an unusual total problem because it doesn't have two parts, this is a total problem with three parts. And that's totally fine to have a total problem with three parts. If we use our total equation here, P1 plus P2, guess what we can add in here? We can just add a P3 equals the total. If you want to use a graphic organizer for this, I'll just draw this over here to the side. Um, here I have my total, and then I could have 
three parts right there, all right? Very easy to amend the equation or the graphic organizer to be a three part or four part, or I've even seen a five part total problem. All right, so we've got our plan. We're solving it as a total problem. Now we're gonna solve this problem. Let's see, tickets for a play were sold on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday if a total of 900. So 900 is a number. We're gonna use that number um, in our equation. Does 900 tell me about one of the parts or does 900 tell me about the total? Well, 900 tells me about the total, so I'll go ahead and write that underneath the T. Notice I don't have to fill this equation left in, left to right. I can put in the word problem information when I get to it. Now let's look up here. I know on Monday there were 197 sold, so 197 tells me about one of the parts. I'll go ahead and write that here. And on Tuesday we had 364. Ooh, a big day for the play. And we don't know the Wednesday part. In fact, there's a question mark there. I will write a question mark right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my signs and I'm gonna solve this problem. Now, how are, could I solve this problem? I could add 197 plus 364. I'm gonna do some math here. So I don't, I don't wanna do that one in my head. I don't wanna make any mistakes. And 16, okay. So that means on Monday and Tuesday, we sold 561 tickets. Now I could think, well, how many do I add to 561 to get to 900? I could also do 900 minus 561. And here we have some uh, regrouping across zero, which always makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, but here we solve that P3, or the question mark, equals 339. And is that 339 bananas or zebras? It's 339 tickets. It's what we underlined in the first place. So I'll go ahead and put a label on my word problem answer. And you know, another really helpful strategy here might be to circle that answer, because there's a lot of work up there that we wanna make sure that we can easily identify the answer. So we have solved the problem, and now it's time to check the work. How could we check the work? We could do 900 minus 339, check that that's 561. We can add all of these three numbers together to make sure that that equals 900. Lots of different ways to check the work. Just make sure that your students use one of those ways. So we solved this total problem. We used our attack strategy and we combined that with a focus on the total schema. In this total problem, we had three parts. Many total problems have two. Sometimes they have four or five, but there are always uh, parts put together for a total. Thank you so much for tuning into this Stair Tailored. Check out some of our others where we look at how to solve different word problems for the different schemas.